yesterday a man stepped to me he said how can you smile when your world is crumbling down I said here's my secret when I want to cry I take a look around and I see that I'm getting by and I hold on change is coming hold on don't worry worry about a thing hold on you can make it hold on don't worry about a thing some people like to worry some people like to hide some people like to run away from the pain inside now that's your business do what you want to do but if it don't work out here's what you got to do just hold on change is coming hold on don't worry about a thing when the trouble of life weigh you down just lift your head up when the love you see is hard to find don't give up be strong keep faith and hold on hold on change is coming hold on don't worry about a thing hold on you can make it hold on don't worry about it listen some people like to worry some people like to hide some people like to run away from the pain inside now that's your business do what you want to do but if it don't work out here's what you ought to do just hold on change is coming hold on don't worry about a thing now here's a little rhythm we used to do la 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 y'all like that la 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 hold on you can make it hold on listen don't worry about a thing just hold on welcome to another wonderful wednesday my name is minister ezekiel vaughn i'm your midweek service conductor for shallow baptist church in plano texas once again, due to COVID-19, we are having virtual service, so we thank God for this opportunity. Once again, we pray that you had a blessed and wonderful Thanksgiving, and every day is a day of Thanksgiving. This evening message, I'll be preaching from the book of Genesis. I want to read two different chapters, and I know if they were grading me, I wouldn't be getting a good grade. And normally we do expository preaching where we expose the text. But this evening, I want to go to a narrative form of uh, deliverance, and one where I may not have three points and a hoop, but the meat is in the story itself. So stay with me here. Come with me to the book of Genesis. I want to look at chapter 39 and 41. I'll be reading Genesis chapter 39, verses 20 through 23, and then we'll go to Genesis chapter 41, verse 41 through 43. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, you'll find these words recorded. And Joseph, master, took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisons were bound, and he was in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. 
And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. Come with me to Genesis chapter 41, verses 41 through 43. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in virtue of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and made him to ride in the sucking chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And I want to talk about how we can advance doing this adversity. My subject this evening is advancing in the midst of adversity. Pray with me and pray for me while you're praying. Pray for yourself. Father, we thank you now for this preaching opportunity once again. Lord, you have been with me during my preparation. Now be with me during my presentation. Then help me, even in my demonstration. Would you clear my mind? Allow me to think right. Guide my tongue that I speak right. Then, Lord, we pray for the hearers that you give them ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. In 1975, my senior year in high school at Little Rock Central, I decided that I would read the whole book of the Bible. I started off reading and didn't get as far as I thought I would right away because in the very first book, in the book of Genesis, there's a fascinating story. In the book of Genesis, there's a story of a young man by the name of Joseph who experienced disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Yet he progressed even while disappointment was going on in his life. And now here it is some 45 years later, as I look at the text, I'm still amazed by the a great accomplishment that Joseph was able to obtain even while going through his adversity. And this evening, with all the things that's going on in our world, God has sent me with a message of hope. He has sent me with a message of encouragement. Here, Joseph experienced blessing in tremendous form, in tremendous fashion. It amazes me that how he was able to be blessed even while dealing with adversity. In fact, all of his promotion came while he was going through adversity. Even though, though it was extreme difficulties, he kept going through adversity after adversity, yet he went higher and higher in his achievement. On Tuesday, I got a call from a lady, and she said, you have a moment to talk to me about your book, and that some of you know I, I, I wrote a book, and April, and I talk about don't be so disappointed with your disappointments, and I talk about the story of Joseph. And the lady called me and said, do you have a moment to talk to me about your book? I'm amazed what Joseph was able to accomplish. And the only reason I bring this up uh, during this message is because the lady on the phone talking to me was 88 years old, <laughs> and she was telling me that what she learned about Joseph and how he did with adversity. Can I tell you this evening, you're never too old to learn what God's word has to say, a word to help us. So I believe this story is relevant for me, but it ought to be relevant for somebody listening to me. The mere fact that yes, you can advance, you can rise, you can accomplish even though things are not going on well. 
You can advance in the midst of adversity. Webster defined the word adversity as a great hardship, great disaster, unpleasant, difficult, arrogant, bitter circumstances. And if you've lived long enough, you ought to be able to testify that even God's children, when they are living right, still will have difficult. Job 14 and 1 puts it this way. Man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. You're going to have some difficult. And I could testify myself. I've had my share of difficulties myself. Somebody out there listening to me know that one day you can be employed and the next day you can be unemployed. <laughs> Somebody like me can testify you can be making six figures and then the next week making no figures and you got to figure it out. Yeah, it is true that life has its share of ups and downs. Life has its bittersweet experience. And this evening I've been challenged to let you know that just because everything is not smooth sailing, it does not mean that God is not setting you up to bless you. Now, when I speak of adversities, I'm not talking about some little minor thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not talking about some meager affair. What I'm talking about is major COVID-19 pandemic. Lives are being lost. Finances are slipping away. And what it is is that <clears throat> we go through adversity, but we sometimes don't realize God can use adversity to promote us. And Joseph, even though he's going through, he's elevated, he's promoted, he even advanced. And I said all that to tell somebody, listen to me, don't give up on life. Just because you believe success has passed you by, you can rise to new heights. You can experience advancement. Somebody ought to put this on a motivational channel. Yeah, you can be lifted up. Even while you're going through some difficult time. You got anything to back that up, Minister Vaughn? Yeah, read uh, 3 John. John 1 and 2 said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. The Lord want us to prosper. He want us to advance. And really, when you study the Bible, the major characters in the Bible, the reason why we know them is because they had to deal with adversity. You, you remember Job, don't you? I just preached two weeks. We know Job, even though he was the richest man in the land, we know Job because he lost everything he had. He lost his children. He lost his cattle. But we know Job because he had to face adversity, and God gave him double for his trouble. You remember David? David was the great king of Israel. But we know David not so much for his great achievement. You know, one queen said, the have have not been told. But we know David because he had to face a giant called Goliath. He had to face his adversary face to face. And you remember the Apostle Paul? He wrote most of the New Testament. But Paul and Silas ended up in jail. And at midnight, the darkest hour of the day, we know Paul and Silas because it was a jailhouse rock. And even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who healed the sick and raised the dead and gave sight to the blind, changed water into wine at Cana. We really know him not just because of his miracle, but we really know him because on a hill called Calvary, he had to face death. 
dying on the cross for the sins of men, be buried in a grave for three days and then rise again. We know him because of how he faced his own adversity. And so this evening, I want to stop by and encourage somebody listening to me right now to tell you don't give up on God just because it looks like you're going through a down time. I want to submit to us that too many of us give up too fast. Yeah, I'm the family care minister here at Shiloh, and I discovered that we go visit the sick, but if you stay sick too long, you'll find out the visits get shorter and shorter. Yeah, because we lose hope. And that's what happened to people because they say they're going to stay with the Lord, but something happens when days turn into week, and weeks turn into months, and months turn into years, that we want to give up on God. But I'm pleading with you today, don't give up during these rough times. I'm pleading with you to take a look at this character by the name of Joseph. Joseph is a crane with adversity. Joseph, you recall, his daddy gave him a coat of many colors. And that's where the trouble started because his own brothers were jealous of him. Yeah, it's Joseph who goes through hatred from his own family. Well, two things happened here. His father gave him a coat of many colors. But also he started having dreams about one day his brothers and his families would bow down to him. Yeah, and that will cause jealousy. And I need to let somebody know this evening, if I was making a point here, adversity comes from strangers. But I discovered that most of our uh, difficulties come from folks we know, folks in our own family, not strangers in chapter 37, we discover that his father tell Joseph to go check on his brothers. He go check on his brothers and they say, yonder, here comes that dreamer. They plotted before he made it that they would put him in a pit. Judah said, no, we're not going to do that, but can I tell somebody, you got to be careful who you share your dreams with because there are some brothers they don't want to hear about your success. Preach, Vaughn. There are some haters and alligators that don't appreciate God lifting you to the next level. You got to be careful who you share your dreams with. And yeah, they said we're going to put them in a pit. And they came up with a plot to say that an animal would, would kill him. And they took the coat back. And then Judah said, wait a minute. We're not going to take his life. And there was some Ishmaelites, I'm cutting the cross here, that was coming through and they end up selling them to the Ishmaelites who were going down to Egypt. When he gets to Egypt, he ended up being sold to Potiphar's. That's part two of the text. He ends up in Potiphar's house. And can I tell you, uh, that's where some blessings come in. Because Potiphar observed Joseph. And he immediately noticed something. When he looked at Joseph, he noticed over a period of time that something was different. And can I tell somebody going through uh, that just because you're going through, uh, it does not mean that while you're going through your pain, your agony, and your despair, that God is not setting you up for a comeback. And that's what happened here Potiphar noticed that everything Joseph did, it was good. Look at the text. The text says, and the Lord was with Joseph. And that's what I want to tell somebody. If the Lord is with you, you ought to have some confidence. If the Lord is with you, you ought to have some pride. If the Lord is with you, uh, you need to understand things are going to work out. Can I just park for a minute and tell somebody, too many of us, that our God's children are agonizing over who's against us. 
Too many of us are losing sleep because of co-workers being hateful. Too many of us are growing impatient because folks doing us wrong. But can I tell you this evening, stop worrying about who's against you. And take notice of who's for you. If God be for you, yeah, he's more than all those against you. I know they're going to attack you. I know they're going to hate on you. But you got to understand who's with you. And when God is with you, you don't have to worry about it. If the law is for you. And I submit to you this evening that the law was with Joseph for at least two reasons. Number one, he had the right spirit. Tell somebody he had the right spirit. Well, he had the right spirit because even though he had been done wrong by his family, he still maintained the right spirit. But tell him number two, he had the right attitude. The right attitude will bring you the right gratitude because he maintained the right attitude. He did not let the hardships he did not let the meanness, he did not let the adversary make him be mean, make him be bitter. Can I tell somebody this evening, just because folks treat you bad, you don't have to treat them bad. Too wrong, don't make a right. And just because folks treat you bad, bitter, and wrong, you don't have to treat them bad, bitter, and wrong. In fact, you heap calls of fire upon them when you live according to the precept and example that God has given us. And don't let mean, bitter, hateful folks make you bitter, hateful too. I discovered that hurting folks hurt folks. And if folks been hurt, they want to hurt you. But you got to be bigger than those people. Don't let hurt folks make you be a hurting folk. So Joseph shows us it's possible to be hurt by others, yet not return hate for hate. Verse 3, chapter 39 his master saw that the law was with him and made him prosper. Well, that's my question this evening. Can you and I deal with adversity and maintain the right attitude? I'm asking you, how are you going to respond when you get the layoff notice? Mm, how are you going to respond when your marriage becomes disconnected, how are you going to respond when your children stop, start acting knuckleheaded? How are you going to react during adverse situations? When things get bitter, don't allow them to make you bitter. Jesus says, love them that hate you. Jesus says, bless them that curse you. Jesus said, pray for them that despitefully use you. Well, I got to move on down the line because he was doing everything he was supposed to do. But stay with me in the text uh, just because he was doing everything he was supposed to do. He had favor of God working in his life. Can I pause real quick and just tell some of you I know why you don't have favor. Because you too mean, you too hellish, you too stuck up, you too putting down, you too deceitful, you too prideful, you too haughty. And that's why you don't have favor, because God can't use you uh, with a bad negative attitude. Uh, and that's why you may not have favor. What Sunday school you been going to? Uh, what book you been reading? Because God can't bless uh, all of that you, you are doing. Uh, and if you really want to have the favor of God, look at Joseph, how he maintains integrity. Well, secondly, I see here he faced some unexpected trouble while working at Potiphar's house. I don't have time to unpack it, but Potiphar's wife was a desperate housewife. 
Mm -hmm. And the text says uh, that Joseph was goodly to look at. He was fine as wine, right on time, like a diamond. Miss Potiphar want to have a piece of him. Can I tell somebody you can be doing what you're supposed to do at the right place at the right time and trouble will still knock on your door. That's what happens here to, to Joseph where Potiphar's wife comes at him again and again and finally falsely accuse him. And Joseph ends up in prison. Stay with me, stay with me. But even while in prison, look at the text. The Bible said, but even in prison, Joseph maintained his integrity. And can I submit to you that just because you're going through, just because things are not working out the way you're playing, every now and then the road to advancement goes through a valley of hardship. Preach, Vaughn. Every now and then the road to advancement goes down a rough path. And here that's what happened to Joseph. He's in prison for doing the right thing. But stay with me in the text because Joseph you remember I told you he was a dreamer and now here it is what's been placed in him shows up at the right time the text says that in prison was the butler and the baker and both of them started having dreams and were disturbed by the dream. Long story short, Joseph interprets the dream and the butler ended up being restored back. And Joseph tells him, when you get back in your place, remember me. Well, the butler did not remember Joseph. And now here in the text, I can tell Tell you that folks uh, that ought to support you will forget about you. Can I tell you folks uh, that you help out of the gutter will forget about you when they make it in the palace. Folks uh, that you picked up when their car broke down will forget about you. Uh, folks that you pay for their lunch won't pay for your lunch. And I need to tell somebody don't be dismayed when folks that ought to help you don't. Yeah, and here in the text. It shows us uh, two years later, yeah, that Pharaoh started having a need for a dream interpreter. And the butler said, I remember a boy that was in prison with me that he knows how to interpret dream. He said, go get him. And I'm just seeing now as they go get Joseph and he shaved himself and he cleans himself He's going for an interview that he already had the job. And he comes before Pharaoh. I'm hitting the fast forward button here. He told him the dream that you are having is seven years of plenty and seven years of fame. And Pharaoh said, well, anybody can handle this. And he said, well, since you told me what I needed to know, I'm going to make you the secretary of agriculture. And that's where we get in our text 41 he takes off his rings and put them on Joseph's hand. And he takes off his clothes and put them on Joseph. Can I tell you, when the Lord is with you, you can go from wearing prison clothes to wearing priest clothes. When the Lord is with you, you can be locked up one day and set free the next day. Yeah, that's what happened here. And now that he's sucking in command, it was hunger in the land. And now here come his brothers. They had to come down to Egypt to get some food. And Joseph is now a man. And his brothers do not know who he is, but Joseph know who they are. Long story short, he sets them up to go back home. They go back home and tell their father they got to bring Benjamin with them. And he says, Benjamin not, and Joseph is not. And all of these things against me, they come back and Joseph couldn't take it anymore. He says, I'm the one you mistreated. I'm the one you put down, but don't feel bad. You meant it for my bad, but God meant it for my good. I'm trying to get somebody to see that just because you're going down a road of adversary, 
just because you're going through some rough places, just because they treated you bitter and bad, it could be God setting you up to be blessed. It could be God is making a way out of no way. It could be God is taking you to the next level. I'm trying to tell somebody, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Joseph does the right thing, even though others are doing him bad. And Joseph said, it's all right, boys. This thing has worked out. And I need to close by encouraging somebody that might be going through a physical storm. I need to encourage somebody that might be going through a financial storm. Reality is God sometimes allow us to go down the rough side of the mountain. But I want to tell you the will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot protect you. I'm out of here, y'all. I need to let you know, stay with the Lord. Well, you know I'm a storyteller. Can I tell you one story and get out of here? Once upon a time, there were a bunch of little frogs, and uh, they had a contest. They said uh, they wanted to see uh, if the frogs could run in this competition. Well, they gathered all the frogs together to be in this competition to see who could go up this big tower. And all the little frogs came and started jumping, jumping as the race began. Well, as the race begun, somebody in the crowd yelled out, I know they can't do it. Somebody else said, I know it's too difficult. Somebody else said, I know they'll never get to the top. All of the frogs were hopping and hopping, jumping and jumping. And all of the people kept talking negative and negative. Finally, after so much discouragement, they stopped one by one. All of a sudden, one little frog kept hopping. And the folks were saying, I can't believe he's trying to make it. I know he can't do it. And after all of that discouragement, this little frog finally made it to the top. When he got to the top uh, and came back down, they said, well, we need to know, little frog, how did you make it? to the top. We want to understand uh, when everybody else gave up, what made you uh, get to the top? The little frog looked at him, threw his hands up and told him, I'm deaf. I can't hear what you ask me. I can't hear what you saying. Can I tell somebody you got to be deaf? to negative folks. You got to be deaf to pessimistic folks. You got to be deaf to negative folks because the idea was he thought he could. And as long as you think you could, you can. Don't let folks tell you, you too short. It may mean you the best person to get something that's low. Don't let them tell you, you too tall. You the best person to get something high. Don't let them tell you, you too fat. You the best person to keep them warm. You got to learn how to you whatever God gave you. And if he gave it to you, it's to advance you. Good evening. Failure is not final. When we fall down, we can get back up. Because of Jesus dying on the cross, we too have a right to the tree of life. And because he died and rose again, we are the recipients of another chance. Not a second chance, but another chance. Because <laughs> we messed up our second chance long time ago. The invitation is being extended. Will you come? You can make it in the midst of your adversity. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Jesus.
Just now, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now. He will save you, he will save you, he will save you, he will save you, just now, just now, he will save you. He will save you just now. You got to do something. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him just now. Just now. Only trust him. Only trust him just now. While the invitation was being extended, there's a number on the screen. You may call, and we'll have someone to call you back, talk to you about the plan of salvation. But the reality of life is that we're going to have some difficult moments. Every day will not be smooth sailing, but God allowed me to see through this text that you can advance even in the midst of your adversity. Truth is that the text concludes with, they meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. Be blessed.